a hundred yards to come. Street Sense, any given Saturday, down to the wire. It's Street Sense, any given Saturday, is right back at him. These two heads apart, too close to call, might have been Street Sense. You took a look at Street Sense winning the Tampa Bay Derby. That was already 15 years ago. Even people like Scott and I were young back then when that happened. It's hard to believe, I know. But we're back to discuss the Tampa Bay Derby. Street Sense, of course, won that Tampa Bay Derby back in 2007. Set a track record, if I remember correctly, in holding off any given Saturday. And then roughly seven, eight weeks later, won the Kentucky Derby. Scott, I don't know if we're dealing with another Street Sense in this year's field, but I think it's a pretty interesting and exciting group. Yeah, it is a pretty good group. Always seems to be a pretty good group, not necessarily Kentucky Derby contenders, Nick. And I'm older than you by a good bit. So uh, thanks for reminding me of that. But uh, that was a fun crop, Street Sense, Hard Spun, uh, a couple other really good horses in there and a fun derby, of course. But uh, Classic Causeway is obviously the horse to beat off of that impressive win in the Sam F. Davis. Probably going to get his uh, spot in the Kentucky Derby regardless of the outcome here. But uh, you're on him or you're not in this one. I'm on him. You know, I'm unoriginal. I'm, I'm not creative here. I will admit I was pretty taken by the race he ran in the Sam Davis. I'll tell you my big worry is that there was so much speed in the Sam Davis. I think everybody got a little concerned about going and pushing him. And, and even though he was the hunted as the favorite, you almost feel as if he might be even more of it this time around. I just think at this stage of the game, he's better than these horses. I don't know if he's better than every three-year-old alive, but I think right now he's just superior to what he's going to face in this, in this race. Yeah, I agree. He's no doubt the likeliest winner in this spot. It was an impressive return race. He popped the gate that day, too, so they would have had to have been overly aggressive. He kind of got a head start, if you will. Uh, but, yeah, he's a horse I've always been pretty high on. Not sure if he's going to win the Kentucky Derby, but they're going to have to have their running shoes on to beat him. But he's probably going to be a pretty short price. So while I respect him and think he's the likeliest winner, I'm going to take a swing against him with Strike Hard, a horse I think you liked in the Sam F. Davis last time, Nick. And I'm sure you know, uh, if you wagered on the horse, that things just did not go his way that day. Normally a horse that has some tactical speed was, was uh, marooned to the far outside, didn't get out of the gates well, was wide, wide, and wider throughout, and still kind of fought on to finish fourth. You could definitely make the case he wasn't even as good or close to a Shipsational, but I thought Shipsational had a better trip. And now you get a, a major rider upgrade. You get Luis Saez to come in and ride a horse that I think has talent. He ran second in the Mucho Macho Man to uh, Simplification, who came back to win the Fountain of Youth impressively. So I think there's some talent here, and I think we should get a pretty good price. Yeah, one of the things I didn't love about his trip last time out, in addition to being sort of hopelessly wide, was I felt like his jockey kind of shoved him into the race a little bit early. And, you know, that was one of the things that was amazing about that race. And I remember I, I was watching it. I was watching it on my phone as I was driving. Don't let the Texas Department of Public Safety know that. But <laughs> I, I thought to myself, you guys are all squandering this setup. Like this was a this was supposed to be a huge pace. And a lot of riders were really using their horses early to stay a little bit closer. I'm very interested in seeing what Saez ends up doing because it feels he feels like a horse that you really want to sit about a mid-pack trip with. But of course, one of the risks of taking a horse like this is that you're at the mercy of what goes on on the front end. I still think it's safe to take this horse at a decent price because Again, you're going to get the value there. Um, I don't think he'll be, well, he was 12 to one last time. But he actually took a, took a huge late hit. I promise it wasn't my money that ended up dropping him down to 12 to one. But I think he'll be, you know, in that range. When we're taping this, there's no morning line out yet. But again, I think you'll get a good bit of value. Let's talk a little bit about who might be considered the up-and-comer in the field, and that's number three, Happy Boy Rocket for Bill Mott, who broke his maiden last time out. This was a really highly regarded son of Run Happy, who went for almost 40 times the stud fee after working very impressively at the Ocala sale last April, had the misfortune of running into a really nice Todd Pletcher training on debut. And then I'll tell you what, Scott, he put it together in a hurry to win at second asking. He sure did. Now, the question to me is, is how good is the field he beat? Those runners that finished second and third were underwhelming in their next start. But Happy Boy Rocket did bury them and uh, was a horse that clearly looked like he wanted all of the two-turn distance in that debut effort you mentioned was at seven furlongs. Does have to pick things up in terms of any speed figure that you're going to look at. Is he a horse that you have interest in or do you think he'll get over bet based on that effort or... I would definitely use him in a multi-race play, probably more as a backup than a primary player. And it's only because, I, you know, in, in Bill Mott, I trust in this kind of situation, he actually has a, a sort of a bizarrely good record running horses in graded stakes races off of maiden wins, as you and I were keyed in on a couple of months ago with regards to the Holy Bull. And uh, we're going to see if it plays out this time around. I, I think it's probably a little bit more random than it is some 
something concrete, but I, I like the confidence. And I will say, I think the run happy progeny are really excelling as the distances get a little bit longer. And I think this horse is sort of proof positive of that. Let's head home to under the twin spires and take a look at major general who makes his, uh, I think somewhat anticipated three-year-old debut after ending a two race campaign as a two-year-old winning the Iroquois uh, back in September. This is a horse who at that point in time was certainly considered a player for the breeders cup juvenile things obviously have not gone according to plan. He's back almost exactly six months after that race. Where do you stand on Major General? I'm probably against him a little bit here. I was underwhelmed by the way the Oracle was run that day. It hasn't come back to be an overly productive race. Now, hard to outright just toss Todd Fletcher. Oh, he hasn't won the most recent Tampa Bay Derby, but he has five lifetime wins in the event and, you know, really points to this race with some of his better runners. But I think he'll be prominently placed here, but he's going to probably have to stalk off Classic Causeway. I don't know if I want to say he'll need the race to be at his best. If he's talented enough, he should be able to give Classic Causeway and the rest of the field his run for the money. But uh, I do think he'll get a little more money than I'm willing to swallow in here. So I think Major General, of course, that I'm going to let beat me on Saturday. Yeah, thinking back to that night uh, the uh, when the Iroquois was run, it was the first Saturday of the September meet, and the two – two-year-old races, the Iroquois and the Pocahontas were running in ex just extraordinarily different uh, different scenarios, right? Hidden Connection sat on top of a slow pace, came home really fast. Major General sat off a hot pace and kind of came home slowly. But as you said, the race has not come back with a particularly strong showing from the also Rams. There was one more that you wanted to talk about who I think is going to be a big price. I don't want to steal your thunder. Yeah, it's Trademark who makes his second start of the uh, three-year-old campaign for trainer Vicky Oliver and definitely going to need to get faster. But this was a horse that did his best running on the front end towards the end of the year last year in his two-year-old campaign with two straight wire-to-wire -wire wins at Churchill Downs. Got caught in a little bit of a tricky spot in that first race off the bench between rivals. Now with an inside draw inside of even classic causeway i'm expecting daniel santeno to get aggressive from the gate i don't think this horse has much of a chance if he's not on or right near the front end in a clear position and i think he'll get that here maybe he can kind of hit the board and uh, blow up the uh, exotics a little bit and if you like classic causeway you're probably going to look for some long shots underneath hopefully strike hard and trademark will run pretty well at pretty good prices the old short price over big price. I've always been a fan. That's a look at the Tampa Bay Derby. Scott, we're headed right towards May 7th, and the train is full steam ahead. Yeah, I'm excited. We're getting closer. Things starting to take a little bit better shape here with some horses rising to the top, some kind of faltering. But uh, the Tampa Bay Derby is the lone race this week, and uh, all eyes will be on it in terms of the road to the Derby, Nick. Can't wait as we continue to uh, move towards that first Saturday. And maybe we get a rare week off next week with no derby preps, no major derby preps slated, but then we'll have all the spots around the calendar in advance of it. Scott, thank you for joining me. Everybody out there, make sure you're playing along on twinspires.com. And until we meet again, best of luck.